let me bring this lady on. I mean, your mental health and your date, um, you work with um, Connect Alone. I hope I got that right. How do you pronounce that? Yeah, yeah, Connect Alone. <laughs> Right. Kanekalon, it's so, not Kanekalon. Yes, um, can you tell us a bit about Kanekalon? Okay, Kanekalon. Uh, can you tell us a bit about you? Because uh, I, 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 I've read about you, but I want to hear from you who is Esther and what drives Esther. Okay, um, my name is Esther Tikijeko. Um, I always describe myself as a mental health advocate because that is what I've been doing for a long time now. <laughs> Um, I used to be a beauty queen, like I used to be involved in a lot of beauty pageants, you know, award-winning models. I'm a fashion designer as well, and I'm the manager for Kanekalan Beauty Consult. I'm the manager of Kanekalan Beauty Consult. And I, I started um, talking about mental health issues when I figured that it's a lot of problems for us, even though I focus more on teenagers, because um, I figured that um, that was the age I struggled more with mental health issues. And I realized that there is a whole lot of teenagers out there who are also struggling with these issues and they have people to, they don't have people to talk to, just like I didn't have a lot of people to talk to during my own time. So yes, I started my podcast called Fill Up With Esther Stitches, where I talk about mental health issues. And I also reach out to teenagers. Some people reach out to me, some people get my number from someone who has, you know, I've probably spoken to before and then they reach out to me on WhatsApp. And I mean, that is what drives me. What drives me is uh, the fact that I came from, I mean, I have a whole lot of issues when I was going up with my mental health. I had parents who didn't, not parents, <laughs> want parents, <laughs> who, didn't, who wanted me to do something else. And I, I was doing something else, you know. I was, I was a whole, um, I'm not trying to use this F word, but I was just a whole mess up child who didn't know what she was doing at the point. I was, I was just confused. I didn't know what I was doing because it's like the foundation of my childhood was not really what I should get. Um, you know, I wanted to go into the art world. They pushed me to science. That was, <laughs> that was the first, that, that was when my, my, you know, my confusion started. You know, and then I had this elder sister who died that gave me depression and all of the other stuff that happened to me when I was growing up. And I figured that looking back at where I started and where I'm coming from and that I got to this point, I started asking myself so many questions. How did I get to this point where I have so much peace of mind? How did I get to this point where I'm so much aware of myself? How did I get to this point where I'm doing well for myself without anybody's help? I mean, my, my, my dad wasn't doing anything. So it wasn't like I grew up in a reverse spoon kind of home. It's like I was out there doing my stuff. And then I, get, I got to this point where I felt like there has to be more to me if I have, if I have, I mean, if, if I had passed through so much and then I'm in this stage, I started asking myself so many questions. And I realized that there were so many people who were giving me strength, even without me knowing. I mean, my mother was giving me strength. Mm -hmm. She was one hell of a hustler. And... And these things kind of drive me that I know that there are a whole lot of people out there who have the same or who passing through the same thing like I, I did, and they don't have anybody to talk to. And it took them so long to get to the point where they find peace of mind and they find forgiveness. And after talking to some teenagers and they're like, I don't know who to talk to, I don't have friends, I feel like committing suicide, and I'm like, I have been there before and there was nobody to talk to as well. And it took me a lot of years. It's like the Bible was my companion, you know. <laughs> and seeing that there were a lot of people going through the same stuff is like, no, I have to reach out to these people. I know that it's, it's a lot of hard work to get to this point where you feel at peace, where you probably forgiving people, where you now have so much to tell other people and so much to encourage other people with. So that force really drive me that I want to share the story. I want to be able to encourage somebody else. I want to be able to say, you know, look at where I'm coming from. This is where I am now. I think you can do better, you know. And yeah, that is what drives me. Wow, that, that, um, that's a hell of a story. Um, you recently graduated from the early of film um, academy. So um, it appears that you have yeah. interest. In, in acting, so you, you're interested in acting, you're interested in beauty, um, you're interested in mental health. How do you marry these three things together? 
Okay. Um, my, my basic for growing, I mean, when I was growing up, I realized that I loved anything, the beauty industry. I, I love the art world. I wanted to study theater art, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but, you know, growing up in, the, in a family where your father is not, you know, um, most of those parents from that age don't support anything going into pageantry, modeling, and acting. My dad just said, you know, one day came to my school, tell the principal, you know, you're going to move this child from art to science. <laughs> and that was like, I was so confused. But anyways, after growing up, I started asking myself so many questions, you know. I mean, I've been doing pageantry for a long time. I've been doing pageantry since 2012, and I've been winning, like, back-to-back. -back. People will know me. I won. I mean, when I was in Unilag, I won Miss Honors Hall, Model of the Year, and then I won Miss Carnegie in 2015. I mean, I also won Most Talented Beauty Queen in Nigeria Beauty Pageant, Miss Intercontinental, Most Photogenic. You know, it was a whole lot of pageants I was doing, and I realized I was always winning something. Either I'm winning an award, I'm winning something, and I'm like, I have a flair for this, and it comes naturally to me. And I went to I went to beauty um I went to fashion school because I had interest in it, but I started asking myself so many questions like what would you want to do? You know when you get to that point where you figure that okay you studied the wrong course, you you studied the wrong thing, you don't know what to do, you're now confused, you're at this edge where you're asking yourself so why did I even go to school? <laughs> what did I not want to do? You know, <laughs> and I figure that I mean I have to go back to what I love. I have to go back to that thing that always moved, that thing that motivated me, which was the beauty industry, which was pageantry, which was modeling for me. And it was actually acting that came to my mind at first when I was younger. So I decided to go back, you know, studying, you know, acting and then with Del York. And currently I am studying with Royal Arts Academy. And, you know, I, I started working for Carnicolon Beauty wow. and Carnicolon as a whole after winning Miss Carnicolon 2015. And then I worked with Esther McCann for a while and then. I was, you know, officially became a nine to five worker. But even as a nine to five employee, I still realize that I have my dreams and I have my goals and I have things that I would really want to do that would, you know, give me some fulfillment and I need to pursue them as much as we want, you know, um, a secure job, you know. And that was how it been. And then the mental health thing came in when I feel like there were there's a whole lot of people passing through the same thing that I am. And I think that I need to be able to reach out to these people. I need to be able to talk to them. I need to encourage them. So it's not, it, it has, um, some people will say it's, it's two different things, but I don't think it's two different things. It's like more of my life journey and trying to use that to encourage teenagers who are out there. I mean, if you watch my status yesterday, I was at Songo Tejo um, yesterday. I was with a teenager who was supposed to commute suicide. She was supposed to commit suicide. I mean, we've been chatting for a while and, she is, I've been noticing the way she charged, so frustrating and all of that stuff, you know. And all of a sudden, yesterday, I was asking some questions, you know, and it got to the point where she had to tell me, you know what, I made this video because she sent me a video saying, oh, I made this video because I'm just going to commute to suicide tonight. And I'm like, okay, hold on. <laughs> and then we got talking. I had to go all the way down, you know, talk to her. And then after the day, she posted some things on, online saying that she feels mm -hmm. better and then she feels better. So all of this stuff and all of the people who have met, I mean, I've met some other person who was supposed to jump from the, from, um, the story building down. She said she's done, like she's literally done. And if you, if you hear the story of why most of these people actually wanted to end their life, they are almost similar. They're like connected because I have been in that space before. Yeah. After my elder sister died, I felt like, you know, why am I, what am I even living for? I'm doing, studying the wrong course. My dad will not support me. My elder sister was like my cheerleader, you know, <laughs> he was like the person who's, who's always behind me, like, oh, you know what, go and do this stuff. You know, and I, I'm like, okay, so what is left? <laughs> I mean, with no friends, with no, I mean, parent support. So what exactly am I doing here? It was, mm -hmm. it was that. It was that bad for me. And then if I had gone through that point to this phase, I think that I should be able to share my experiences and then I should be able to also extend the love which I think that God has shown to me to other people. So that was how the mental health thing um, came in. So, yeah. I mean, I mean um, I, I've realized that a number of people who are mental health advocates um, started out because of an experience that they had um, either by themselves or someone close to them. And then they see a need that they want to fill up or that they want to meet and stuff like that. 
Now, you're young. Um, the number of expectations that we probably have um, from you and about you, I mean, shared one about um, your father not wanting you to go into the house and, and stuff like that. Are there times that you ask yourself, why am I even doing this? Why, why am I trying to do this? Who sent me this? This era, who sends me this message? Who who asked me to do this? I think that I have adopted, you adopted yourself. If there were, how did you handle those moments? So, I mean, there's a lot of time I doubted myself, you know. There's a lot of time I asked myself questions. If you listen to my um, self awareness series, I encourage people asking themselves questions almost all the time. When you feel sad, when you feel confused. I encourage people asking themselves questions because I believe that the answer still lies within you. If you search deeper, you get the answers. So yes, a lot of times I was, I was confused. I was asking myself too many questions. Why am I even studying this course in school? You know, <laughs> I was going to do, I was going to study medicine, which was my dad's stuff. And then my late sister actually bargained nothing on my behalf because I told her I can't study this. I mean, I can't study medicine. My head will not carry it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And she had to bag in on my behalf. She had to tell my dad, see, this lady can't study medicine. Just allow her to do nursing. I think nursing is like, you know, a bit more easier than medicine. And then I was like, okay, no problem. I went to the Ababa. I would the exam after, you know, seeing people and all of it. I was like, hmm, this thing is not for me. Oh. <laughs> like, I could just tell that this thing is not for me. So what happened was, after going back home, my dad was, you know, very angry. He was like, you're going to study nothing because after studying nothing, you're going to move out of Nigeria and then you're going to earn good morning and your life is just going to be fantastic. And all of that picture he has painted in his head. And, and I left the GR, but I, <laughs> And funny enough, I earn in dollar now. So you can see how, you can see how okay. life is. And, <laughs> so, you know, I, I left I left with the Ababa and then I went back to Uniland and I was like, you know what, what can I study in the school in science department, you know, just you know, study something and get out of this whole <laughs> four walls. And then I wrote the exam, I was like, I don't want something that'll give me a headache. I know I'm not supposed to be in science. Let me just do something, any course and then become a graduate. And I don't need first class, I just wanted two one. That was I just told myself like, No, just let's just just come outside with a good sensitive. <laughs> And I went to the lab, I met this um, lecturer, I kind of spoke with her and then she was like, you know, put in this course. And then I think I set, I set it for marine sciences. And when I came back home, I couldn't even tell my dad that, you know what, I'm now going to study marine sciences because he's just going to look at me like, <laughs> he's just going to look at me like this lady don't understand what she's doing, you know. But it was that course your, that your I, in this life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have direction, I'm powerful with that kind of thing. <laughs> So I just, I came back home. I was looking at all the difficulties and all the shouting and everything I'm going to get today and all the beating and flogging. Mm -hmm. Yes, every African parent can relate to parents buying cane all the time to flog the, the demon out of a child's head. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, I was still pretty much um, um, going for modeling auditions. Even at that time, I was doing ushering. That was how I made most of my money when I was teenager, a teenager. I was going for ushering jobs and all of that stuff because... My dad will not support me if I don't do anything <laughs> that is his will. So it's like, baby girl, you have to like, you know, try and survive. And every time I come back, it's like there's a shouting or there's one thing that's going to happen. So immediately I saw my name on that waiting list, on that list. I just, you know, I just told my dad, I'm leaving you. <laughs> I didn't know how to tell him that I have gotten admission. I just told him I'm leaving the house. <laughs> he was like, so weird. I said, ah. I'm going to go and call my friend in Uni like that, and there's this diploma course that we are going to be doing, and I'm going to be going for the lesson, and, you know, from there, I'm going to try and get admission. And this man said, no, you're going to be going from home <laughs> to school. <laughs> and I said, okay, you know what? I know what I would do. At night, I just pack my bag. I packaged the thing. I packaged all my stuff, and I was like, you know what? I took my stuff to a friend's place at I just kept my box there. I came back and then I was telling my dad again, I'm leaving the house. He was like, I said, you're not going anywhere. So, you know, <laughs> I've already moved my stuff. So he sat down in the parlor waiting for me to take my stuff out of the parlor. And funny enough, I already moved my stuff. So I just moved myself. <laughs> and that was how I left home at 18. 
you know, and I, I got wow. to school, it was tough. My dad, my dad was like, oh, um, my mom is not going to send me any money because I'm a very stubborn person. I'm like the, I'm like the odd child in the house, you know, and then I moved. I was still doing my pageantry and my modeling. And I was so lucky that in my year one, I did Miss Honors Hall. I won, and then they gave me free hostel the next year, and they gave me some of that stuff. So it was more of what I was doing that was keeping me, you know, surviving. I was doing all of that stuff. But, you know, he came around sometimes. He did come around after a while when he started seeing me doing this and all of that stuff and TV, and I was like, okay, looks like this thing is working for her. But even he didn't really accept. I don't think today he still, still go down well with him, but I mean, I tell people that one thing I tell teenagers, <laughs> one thing I tell teenagers, like I was telling someone yesterday, um, the whole thing of parenting kids as a project, the whole thing of parenting um, kids as their old and their old age, you know, collateral to come and back and take care of them, which is, I mean, just logical of human beings to do that. But I think that that pressure shouldn't be on on children that pressure shouldn't be on kids trying to make them feel like oh you have to you know, make money you have to to be able to come back and take care of me and i say to young people you have nothing to prove to anybody you're not proving anything to anybody you have yourself to mm. prove that you're going to be better for them and you have the world to show who you are you have you you should be able to show the world who truly you are what comes naturally to you your talent your gift you have these whole people waiting to see a unique person. Why do parents think that they have to mold everybody to look like every other person? Like, oh, this person is a doctor, so I think my child should be this. Everybody's different. Everybody's unique. Even in my house, when we used to be six and now we're five, I think that we're totally different humans. We are totally different people who have different interests. And I don't think you should try to mold all the children to look alike or all the children to behave alike. And I think that we have nothing to prove to anybody. If at the journey of, if at the, if running your journey or running your ways, you become successful and you, you know, you become good at what you, what you are and what you're doing. And then you decide to go support your parents. That is totally fine. But the aim of you leaving the house every morning trying to you know go out and make something should be that you are trying to show the world who you truly are should be that you're trying to offer the world your talent your values is should be that you're trying to discover what you are what your potentials are and what god has deposited in you not because somebody is trying to mold you to become something that they've pictured in their mind so i mean <laughs> that is the whole topic for us <laughs> over that day but yeah, that is how I feel most of the time. And that is why I encourage people to, you know, go out there, ask yourself questions, discover yourself, show the world who you truly are, not trying to prove to anybody. You know, the teenager I met yesterday was saying that her parents always, I mean, her mom always say she's not good enough, she's not doing this, she's not doing that. And she's trying to make her mother proud. And I'm like, that is where you got it all wrong. That is, that is, the, that is the beginning of your failure. That is that shouldn't be your goal. Your goal should be trying to discover yourself. Your goal should be trying to become better, not trying to make anybody proud. Nobody should give you that project <laughs> because you're not a project, you're a human being. And if they see you as that, they will allow you to explore who you are. They will allow you to figure out who you are, not as a project we're supposed to make me proud or as a project we're supposed to go well and not fail, you know? Looking back, looking back at how all this played out, how you left home, would you say your dad was not considerate? Would you say he was, he was wicked or something? So, um, I would say that um, he grew up in an era where uh, parents always mold people to, you know, um, become who they have pictured their, in their head to become. Um, what I mean is that yeah, yeah. he grew up in an era where parents tell their female kids to, you know, get married at some certain age because the man is supposed to take care of you. He grew up mm -hmm. in that age where the, the, the parents always push the male child to go out and, you know, hustle every morning, that go hunting or go fashion firewood, whatever it is. It's like he grew up in that era where Parents have timetable for their kids' lives. Like, it's like, 
in the morning they've mapped out a timetable 5 a.m you should be in the in the forest you know <laughs> by 12 a.m 12 p.m you should be back home after that you should go to you know go to this place and you know sell and then by 6 p.m you should be home and they have this timetable where they do it every day and that era would sit you down and tell you if you do something like this it will go well if you do something like this it will do this it's like they, they, they think they, they know <laughs> It's like they think they know the universe in and out. And you can't really blame him because that is mm. what he's used to. That is how he has, that is what they have pumped into him. That is the mentality they had. And he cannot train you to become better than what he knows. He's only going to train you um, because he thinks that that's the best thing that he, he knows that can happen. So that is what he's reaching out to you mm. from a very safe place, from a very um, fatherly love kind of place. He's doing it because he thinks that if you do this, you're going to be successful, you're going to be this. So it's not in a way to try and punish you, even though I think that some parents are really extreme. And um, yes, there's some extreme part of my dad, but I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But right now I'm going to say that most of what he did in terms of trying to mold my career was what he taught you know in that age they would tell you if you're a doctor you're a lawyer you're an engineer you're going to you're not going to become poor forever <laughs> you know you're just going to but i mean look at the scenario now in this um sanctuary it's it's totally way different from every other thing and we probably would not know better if social media has not come in if um they are not people who are now you know trying to bring to teach us some other culture we probably will not still know better but the fact that we're learning from other people, we're learning from social media, we're seeing other people's culture, we're seeing other people do better, then our mentality or our mindset are beginning to expand and beginning to change, which is why we try to tell parents, not in a way of trying to scold them, but trying to educate them that time has changed. Time, it's no longer the, the thing you used to know. It's now two way different. The way they used to train you people there, where they'll tell you carry wood on your head and kneel down. It doesn't work anymore. These days, if you tell a child, if there are some punishment that you will give a child that will make them more stubborn. It won't even give them anything. It won't, it won't correct True. them nothing. You know, so, so telling them that time has yeah. changed and some of them are finding it so difficult to accept change because yes, change is a very difficult thing to, to do, you know, to accept. It, it, it's now less for you as a young person who not understand that This is where they are coming from. And this is where you are going to. This is the, the, the time that you are in now. To be able to fight for yourself. To be able to fight for your future. To be able to fight for your happiness and your fulfillment. It is true that some of them are well-educated. Like my mom is well-educated. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whatever she, you tell her you want to do, she's like supporting you. She's like behind you because she's way educated. I mean, she's coming from that era. But because she's traveled and she's seen other things, she's more of supporting their kid, her, her child, you know. And some parents are well educated. I and mean, if you have any one of them, or if you, if you have the both of them that way, then you're lucky. But I'm going to say that if you don't have any of them that way that would support you, then it is left for you to realize that it is not as if you're supposed to fight with them. It is now you fighting for your future, for your happiness. And you have to do whatever it takes to get to that point where you feel you're at peace, where you feel you're happy with what you're doing the truth is they will always come around i think my father started coming around when i won um mm -hmm. wasn't me uh miss panic in 2015 i got um two million naira in a car and it was aired everywhere and it was on linda kg blog it was everywhere it was on the internet and you know his, his mindset started changing he started realizing okay i think people can make a living from this people can make a living from this mm -hmm. when i went to Potaco for an award he started saying that okay i think this thing that she's doing is actually paying off so i mean i haven't even told him i'm going into acting but i told my mom that i'm going into acting <laughs> and she's like you know what go girl but i don't want to tell him that because i'm not ready for that yet i just you know just do what you need to do he will come around it, it's a slow pace for him yeah you say? I say you're not ready for the drama uh -huh exactly so but i know he's going to come around because it is slow pace for him it's change for him and change is really not easy for everybody to you know embrace 
just like I tell myself, I don't really have like father daughter relationship while I was growing up because it was always like fight and beating and shouting and all up, up and down. <laughs> you know, at a point where he figured that, okay, you know what? She's no longer living under your roof. You're no longer feeding her. She's doing well for herself. You need to be able to support in some way. Otherwise, you'll miss out completely in her life. You'll probably just be non existent. And then he started coming around. But also, I try to make him understand that. This relationship is going to build, but it's not going to build overnight. It's not magic. You've not always been there from my childhood, and now you're trying to... I understand that you're, trying, you're making effort, and I'm also making effort, but it's not magic. Um, I mean, I can call my mom, and then we start this thing and saying all... Because it has always been like that, you know? So I tell people, it's not, it's not mm. going to be magic. It's not going to be overnight. We're human. So they are going to come around, but it's going to be slow paced. So... You just keep doing what you're doing. Make sure you're not insulting anybody. Make sure you're not dissing anybody. You're just fighting for your future and your fulfillment. And they will come around, but it's going to be a slow pace. And make sure that sometimes, once in a while, you try to explain in a way that is not saying that they don't know anything, but in a way that you're trying to just, you know, air your opinion and air, let them understand that times have changed. So, yes, I wouldn't say he was doing it out of um, wickedness or something. I think sometimes maybe out of ignorance, or sometimes maybe out of the time that they grew out from. And really, it's, if you look at it, it's probably not their fault. Because, I mean, as we grow older, it's more difficult for us to embrace new things. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you because um, I mean, psychology does that. People act based on the knowledge that they have. You can only act as much as you know. Uh, you can only act yeah. as much knowledge as, as you have. Uh, you as one of a, a, a fantastic one and um i'm glad i'm glad we're able to do this uh what final word would you have for people who who really want to pursue their passion but they feel this stumbling block from their parents uh or from their relatives because they don't believe in what they're about to pursue what would you say to them well um I have a lot to say to them, but <laughs> we're not famous. Sometimes, uh, for those people, you will have to hear their personal story to be sure how to help them out, or to be sure the best advice to give to them, um, because um, people are totally different and scenarios are different. But I'm just going to like change the general scenario from what I've heard from, you know, from talking to teenagers. Um, sometimes you become lost, so I would say that try to think when um, the confusion started from what you wanted to do initially in the first place. Um, and if you've gotten to that point where you figure that this is now what I want to do, make sure that you're doing it from a place of that is exactly how you want to express yourself, not from a place of I want to show them that I can. Oh, you can't seem to hear me again. I can hear you now. Uh, sorry, could you please take that again? Can you hear me? Loud and clear now. Okay. So I was saying that for people who um, are confused, who don't know what to do right now because they didn't get the initial support that they should get, I'm sorry, I'm having a bit issue trying to turn my AC right now. I don't know why. But anyway. Um, so for people who are finding it difficult to, um, who are confused right now and don't know how to move forward, I would say for them to sit down and ask themselves questions. Where did this confusion started from? Where did it come from? Where, at what point did you now start feeling so confused and so, you know, unloved? And you should be able to go back in time and think that. And if you find it make sure that you are not saying it from a place of i want to show them or i want to prove to them anything you're not proving anything to anybody make sure you are doing it in a place that this is what i want to do and this is how i want to express myself and i and make sure you are constantly trying to discover who you are by listening to people going for conferences asking yourself questions meditations all of those stuff awareness stuff that is it's going to take a while, but it's a process. I tell people life is not uh, a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a gradual race. It's a long race. So you have to keep, it's not like there's an end product and then 
I have to just be there. <laughs> it's like you have to keep running. It's a race. And I tell people who always feel, teenagers always feel, oh, I'm getting old. You're not getting any old. You're still so young. So if you haven't discovered what that is, what feeds your soul, take your time, ask questions, reach out to other people, go for conferences, try different things. I was trying different things until I figured out what I actually loved. I was going for modeling. I was going to conferences. I was going for... Sometimes I even went for first bank conference. <laughs> you know, I was going for different conferences. I was, I even did um, courses in Excel, you know, Excel reporting. I did courses in, you know, customer service and all of that. I did courses, project management courses. I was just doing everything because I wanted to figure out what is it that I really love. And really, you can't know until you have tested it and then come out <laughs> and then be like, no, this is not for me. I can't. You know, I, I also did course in product, um, product design. You know, I, I, I was just doing stuff because I was trying to figure out what is it that if I do, I am so happy with. And I figured out, you know, it has to be the beauty industry. <laughs> I figured out that it wasn't, I mean, all of these two people's calculation and all of that stuff. It's not like I can't do it. I can do it, but I figured out mm, it's not really my thing. <laughs> so I, I, I would say that you should sit back, ask yourself, just try new things, try different things. You would never know until you try them. And it's not a waste of time at all. If you're trying to think that, okay, my friend is doing this and they are good at it and you want to copy them, that is where you have it all wrong. You will, in fact, you will mess up yourself more. So looking for your own path by trying different things, you get a hold on it. That is the first step. Secondly, when you find it, make sure that it is coming from a place that you are comfortable, you are happy doing it, you, it and you have a goal. It's not just, oh, I'm happy doing it, and that is it. You have a strategy. You have a goal to meet what it is that you want to do. And, and you have to keep getting better at it. So it's not because they're trying to make anybody proud. It's not because they're trying to prove anything to anybody. You have nothing to prove. You have yourself to get better at whatever you choose to do. And if, you have, if you're not getting support, I think that you should reach out to people to, to I mean, explain, let them know how they can help. I was talking to a teenager the other day, and I'm like, don't you have friends around you? She's like, no, she doesn't have anybody. And I'm like, you need to go out to conferences. No, I, sometimes I check event groups, and then I check, oh, what event is going on in Lagos? You know, <laughs> I just Google and type. Just reach out to people. They will be able to um, talk to you, help you see clearer. Now, um, I'm going to use somebody's, um, I'm going to use somebody's story as an example. She said she wanted to become a TV presenter, and she's been you know, training herself through school. And she now she doesn't, she, I mean, she did um, both me and she doesn't even know where to go because she, she thinks that is not for her. And I'm like, fine, fantastic. At least you know what you don't want. Even if you, <laughs> even if you don't know what you want, you know what you don't want. So that's a good step. Um, and I'm like, okay, so where are you now? You're a final year student and you're working because you have to train yourself. Good. When you are trying to serve, why not try to put in into one of these industry where um, you think that you want to grow in? And if you think that um, you cannot get that industry where you're trying to grow in, why not try to intern with those industries that you're trying to grow in? I mean, you're, for example, she's trying to become a TV presenter. And I'm like, there are so many TV stations around where you could put in your, you know, write your CV or your application, send your application letters to, and you tell them you want to intern. And some people pay their intern, some people might not pay their intern. But I, I was telling the other lady, because you have to feed yourself and you also have to grow your career, I would say, okay, look for a job that is flexible. Look for a job that maybe um, you take one day on, one day off, one day on, yeah. one day off. And then intern in this other company where you have to explain to them, these are the days that I'm free, you know? And I'm very sure that most, most companies are very willing to get interns who are serious-minded, who want to contribute, who want to learn. So if you can intern in this industry that you're trying to... What? They won't ask for money. No, I nobody asks for money from... In I mean, like, they don't have to pay them. That's what I'm saying. Like, most companies will not pay. Some companies will try to provide 
um, at least transportation fare, which is what they say now. But even if you get to intend in companies who will not pay, try to look for a flexible job, maybe a day off or a day off on journey. In that case, she was like, oh, there's this hotel, like a, a well premium proper hotel who does day off and day off, one day off and one day off. And I'm like, that's a good job to take while you're interning in this other place, trying to grow yourself in the field that you think you want to. So, I mean, that is one way to, you know, get yourself off the feet, even if nobody's supporting you. That way you're feeding yourself and you're also learning to get to that industry that you want to be. And no, number two, the thing is, I realize that most people who get into this industry think that it's going to be magic. Like, okay, after two years or after one year that you're finished interning, you're supposed to be earning this huge. It's not going to happen like that. <laughs> Some people get lucky. I was lucky, so I'm not going to tell you that there's no luck in the world. Some people get lucky, but some other people don't find it easy. So you have to be patient with yourself. My lucky wasn't any easy anyway, so don't think I was just that lucky. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that some people don't find it easy. And you have to be patient, which is why I said, what is, your, what is the reason behind you starting that journey? If you know that this is what is going to keep you fulfilled in life, then you have to be patient enough to get to it. You have to be able to pay the price to get it. You have to be able to pay the price of patience, the price of, you know, yeah, the frustration, the price of uh, not being able to, you know, grow your standard of living in, at a point. But the truth is going to pay off. Maybe it's not going to pay off in the first two years, but it's definitely going to pay off five years coming, 10 years coming. And I was giving an example with some people. You know, I, I read, I read um, stories of, more Abudu when she said she decided to go into TV presenting when she was 40. And, and I'm like, like 40, and you are just young. <laughs> so I think that you can still be able to get whatever that you want to get. You can still be able to achieve whatever you want to achieve at whatever age. Just the right strategy and the right planning. Get a flexible job. If you can get a flexible job, then try to intend in the space that you are you're trying to go into as you keep making contact in that field or in that industry that you're trying to get into you always get people who are willing to help everybody's not a monster as people keep hearing your story some people want to help you some people want to elevate you some people are telling you to you know come over to this place we are going to pay you you know i've been in conferences where i don't even know people and then they're like oh you know what i think you're so good at this stuff um, we want to employ you and i'm like again don't be so excited that you want to always move to different stuff, to different companies. You need to have your goal. What are your goals? If the present place that you are is fulfilling that goal, I don't think you should keep moving. What I'm saying is, if you're in a place, if you're having a job that is flexible, and you want to, you're interning or you're trying to grow in the field that you're trying to enter into, and then someone is trying to offer you a job where they pay you high amount of money, but you're not, it's not going to be a flexible job where you have time to intern in that field that you're trying to go. I don't think you should take that offer because it means that you're going to sacrifice your dreams and your happiness just to get a salary. And after that, after spending maybe two years in that place, you get frustrated because there's this thing called dreams and hope that keeps calling us from within. It's like, um, you have to be here. Why are you here? So that question of why am I even here is always frustrating. So don't even set yourself up for failure because of huge salary. It's not always <laughs> what you think it is. So, I mean, if you know what you're doing, I mean, if they're trying to move you from one place to the other in the field that you are already trying to operate, then that's fantastic. But if you're trying to grow and nobody's trying to help or you don't have help, then try to look for jobs that are flexible. I don't know how much they pay. Sometimes they pay really low. But you should be able to have your eyes on the target and have your eyes on what you're trying to achieve. And that way, trust me, all this phase of, you all this phase of, when I was in school as well, I mean, I was doing ushering, I was doing modeling, I was doing activation. I don't think there's a brand I didn't work with. I was, you know, I was always doing this. Sometimes I would do some full ushering job in a day. It's like your feet is going to ache just because I know that I find escape in networking with people in that field, that was the beauty industry. Sometimes you're um, in the conference, sometimes you're 
with some brands and you realize that you are you find fulfillment in networking with people you find fulfillment in being in places that you would never normally be in but because you're an usher or because you're a model you get access to these places i find it i find it really enticing and fun and i was doing it even while i was in school and we shocked you to tell you i graduated with two one even with the course that i didn't like because I was talking to somebody and then she's like, I didn't like the call, so I didn't put in effort. That is not an excuse. For whatever place that you find yourself, even if that is not what you like to do, try to put in the necessary effort and work into it. I mean, I would have probably told myself that, oh, you know what, when I come out from school, I'm just going to go into acting world. I'm just going to do this. I know, paint this Cinderella, Cinderella story in my head and think that the going is going to be good. I'm probably not putting effort into my certificate. But I decided that I was going to be doing my part-time work and I was going to make sure to come out with a 2-1. I, I knew from the very beginning that I didn't like chemistry. So first class is a far first for me. But this one is very close. I can target 2-1. I was calculating my GP back to back. <laughs> so, you know, and now I have to work in a company where my job is quite nice and quite flexible and I get a good pay to, you know, go into this industry that I want to in my own pace, on my own terms, you know, now I go to some auditions, feature any kind of movies I want to, because I'm not hungry. And, you know, I'm doing it at a, at a, at a very, my own pace, knowing fully when I'm going to grow with time. It's not, there's no pressure, there is nothing. So, but that's because I put in the necessary work in my certificate, in my knowledge, my capacity, even while I was trying to chase what I was doing. So if you are someone that you are studying the course you don't like, and you're telling yourself when you come outside, you're just going to, you know, become this blown, full-ass fashion designer. Please, let me tell you, this, this life is not that easy. Better put in the work in that certificate. Maybe the certificate will give you the job that will give you the money that will help you to do <laughs> the thing that you want to do. So wherever you find yourself, try to put in effort. Try to put in effort with networking. Try to put in effort in... It's it's not going to be easy. It's a lot of work. Sometimes when I come back and evening, I'm really stressed. It's not that easy, but you will get to the point where you find it really easy. It will get to that point. Things are not always going to be hard forever. I mean, everybody knows that the beginning of a journey is always very difficult. But at some time, it's not getting easier and easier. So, I mean, the, my best advice for you, if you're not getting um, support from anywhere, look for a flexible job, you know, look for a job that you can do. Um, flexible job and then intern in this other industry where you're trying to go into and it might take you three years four years yes but you know that you're definitely going to do that which you want to eventually do and you know you're going to really be good at this big time and so that's what I'm going to say I mean I, I, I trained myself through school so it's, if you're also saying that oh I'm training myself through school and it's so hard I trained myself through school in fact I bought textbook for myself. I bought textbook for my friends who were even broke out than I am. If there's any word like that. <laughs> People were, who, who I felt like they were, I was even better. I was the one feeding myself and paying my kids, but I was still buying textbook for some other people. So it was that bad. And I can tell you that, I mean, at this point, I think that it's so easy. It's now easier because it's like you're doing this and then you're doing what you love. And then you're, it's like you're seeing it a future for yourself that you really want to be in. And you're not where you are yet, but you're happy that you are at this point, right? So, I mean, that happiness that you get at this point is what keeps you going. And so, I mean, that is what I would, if you have, sometimes you have to listen to people's personal stories to know how best to tell them to work their way up through their situation. This is why sometimes I say, okay, reach me out on Instagram if you have my contact, reach me out, let me see. What is your story? How can we, you know, help you to get into whatever you're doing? But that is really as far as general. I mean, most of the time people use money as excuses. People use um, love as excuses. And then let, let me come to the part of love, right? Um, when I was growing up, I realized that I had this huge void in my heart that I wanted so badly for someone to feel in. You know, um, I had this huge fatherly love that was void, this support that I wanted because I felt like, you know, most fathers would love their daughters and, you know, support them and, you know, give them money to pay some things. And it wasn't coming for me. So it was like there's this whole void that was there that I felt like anytime I met somebody that looked like they could feel <laughs> that void, 
<laughs> it was like I become vulnerable. And the truth, what that does to you is that it makes you waste a lot of time because you need to be able to heal. You need to be able to, um, you need to be able to find a way within yourself to complete yourself as a human. It's not going to be easy again. I'm not, don't, 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 don't think I'm, I don't feel your pain. I have been there, so I understand. It's not going to be easy. I can say now because, okay, I've worked my way up through that void. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm going to tell you, all of those distractions is not necessary. Some people would say, I don't have a sister. I wish I had one, which is why I have too many friends that are not even useful. <laughs> you have, they pack too many friends that are not useful because they think, oh, I need sister. I need someone. I had a sister who was, you know, she was everything that you would ask your sister. And she, she died. And it was like, okay, <laughs> so who, who else? Who is going to fill in this space? You know, this space of me always wanting to have to this one, silly thing. This space of me always asking her questions. But I realized that as a human, I have to be able to fill those void myself. Because if I don't, I will be under pressure to make too many silly mistakes, bring in the wrong people into my life just because I think they will fill in this space. And all of those distractions are really not necessary. They're really not necessary because for you to be successful in life, you need some level of clarity, some level of peace. You need to be able to see your goals so clearly without anybody giving you issues, without you feeling hurt, without anybody breaking your heart, which is inevitable anyways. But you need that level of clarity. And it is up to you to be, it is up to you to be able to reduce the amount of vulnerability you give out to the wrong people so yes if you feel that void of oh i think my parents should have been doing this as normal as we as human beings will always say oh i wish my parents are like this i wish my siblings are like this but we shouldn't just make open that wound for the wrong people to fill in because what happens is some people get lost and they never you know they never come back to you know get you know come I mean, they never come back on track. Why some people are lucky enough to figure that, oh, this is, not, this is not healthy for me. So I would say that if you're in that space where you feel you're alone, nobody loves you, nobody do this, you should be able to work your way up and tell yourself that you're a whole, you're a whole human. You're complete all by yourself. And you have every answer that you need and everything that it takes to get to where you're going to. There are opportunities any, everywhere. There's Google, you can only search Google. There's Instagram, you can only DM people. One person might not reply you, two person might not reply. I mean, you're not asking them for money, you're only asking them for advice. And trust me, people, sensible people again, are going to reach out to you and they're going to advise you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very, very much. I mean, you have, you have given us a three course meal. <laughs> to be very honest. So I have to I have three trivia questions as we bring this to a close. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. The first question. How many boyfriends did you have when you were in school? Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that question because that answer, my answers are very arrogant. When I was in school, I always tell myself this, I don't have time for socks and sandals. I still think that answer is very arrogant to today. When I mean socks and sandals, I just, <laughs> it was <laughs> students. I think I don't have that time for students. So most, I mean, I had one guy then and He's not a student, he was working. And I was, because I knew where I was coming from and I needed, I knew the kind of people I wanted in my life at that then. It wasn't always like that, but at a point I knew the kind of people I wanted in my life. I wanted someone who, who was ahead of me, someone who could support me with good advices, with, you know, someone who could just help me out. I think, I, 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 my thought then was like, students my age were also going through something that I don't think that they can, they can help me. So I just thought like, you know what, um uh, Sanders are not my thing. <laughs> I mean, that is very arrogant, but <laughs> but yes, I didn't have like a school boyfriend, like but I had like yeah, I had a boyfriend when I was 
in school, but it wasn't like a school boyfriend. <laughs> The other one is gonna, the other one mean boyfriend. One what? I said, so you have two boyfriends, right? One in school and the one mean boyfriend. No, did you just hear what I, did you, did you hear me? I said that when I was in school, I was not a fan of socks and sandals. Socks and sandals to me then mean students. I was not going to date any student. So as I was saying, the whole University of Lagos, I did not date anybody as a student. That was a student, as in, in the whole University of Lagos. <laughs> there was nobody that was a student that was my boyfriend. I had just one boyfriend. <laughs> and he was quite popular in school because he was always showing up for me during my pageant days and my awards and all of that stuff. So, yeah, so it was quite supportive. So. <laughs> but I was, I was like every guy's friend. I was like the girl that, Every guy wants to talk to you because I was just carefree and you know, I, I'm not going to date you, so I just wanted you to be my friend. And you will find me in the midst of scholars. <laughs> I mean, most scholars are my friends. Most scholars in school were my friends because I was not always in school, I was working. So most of the time when I come back to school, it's like, I want to learn. It was like, for me, it was like almost every relationship in my life has to be saving a purpose. So that was, that was the point I was in school because I mean, I was depressed because of my sister's death and because there was no support. So I, I just told myself, you know what, any relationship that is going to be in my life has to be serving a purpose, a good purpose for me. And yeah, I didn't have any, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't date any students when I was, I'm sorry. Okay. And next, the next question, if you're to choose between cereal and swallow, which would you choose? No, that's a very difficult question for me. <laughs> because, um, but I would say swallow. Um, I would say swallow. I mean, um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of English food, but uh, sometimes I like swallow. I'm a new girl now. <laughs> okay, the final. Do you still model? Yeah, but even though it's like um, very uh, minimal time now because I am more focused on other things. I'm focused on what I actually want to do. Um, I do model once in a while on, you know, basics of people who, you know, reach out to me and say, you know what, we want to, you want you to do this stuff for you and want me to do stuff for them. And I, yeah, I do that once in a while, but it's not like my major thing right now. It's not like I, I don't do ushering jobs anymore, of course, because times have changed <laughs> but yeah in terms of helping other people market their business and all of that stuff or yes i want to know why i do that because i'm more focused on you know going into acting oh. and tv presenting and you know working on my job yeah. i didn't hear you I said, so we can call you to help us market our business. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I find funny enough. I find, I mean, it comes to me naturally. I mean, when you give me your product, you tell me about it. It comes to me naturally to know how to help you market in your <laughs> And, you know, that is one thing I do for my company as well. Help them penetrate new markets, you know, help them, um, you know, give them the market strategy that is current right. market strategy, you know. Most of our people are like young people, young adults. So yeah, it comes to me naturally. So yes, some people used to call me sales, sales like I'm like very good with sales and marketing. But even though I'm not trying to take that career path. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you, Esther. It's been an amazing time you, and um, we can only wish you the very best. Um, that your I have learned quite a number uh, from my time together. Thank you very much for doing this. So ladies and gentlemen, this is much. Esther Chukujeku. So much yeah. uh, time together. And I hope that you have gleaned one or two things from what she has shared. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for inviting me here. I'm, it's, I, I enjoyed my time here. and. Um, if you have any other questions, you could DM me on Instagram at SFTJU. Yeah.